The world is going to consume almost twice as much energy 30 years from now as, as it does today. Climate change is coming, and so we need to actually innovate ahead of that, the, the negative effects. We need innovation that gives us energy that's cheaper than today's hydrocarbon energy, that has zero CO2 emission, and is as reliable as today's overall energy system. And it's when you put all those requirements together, you go, wow, we need an energy miracle. Bill Gates and his colleagues looked at solar, wind, every kind of energy you can think of, and determined that they're all important, they all have their role. However, nuclear was the only source of energy which could provide the necessary huge quantities that we need on a global basis. Not everybody's for nuclear. There's re resistance to it in some places. And so we're, what we've decided to do is take those concerns and just tackle them head on solve them and, and, and move forward. This is a model of the traveling wave reactor. Uh, it is different than other reactors because it can use the type of uranium that today is just thrown out as its fuel. Well, traditional nuclear power, for every 100 pounds of uranium we mine, 90 something of it does not ever see a reactor and so what an unfortunate waste. We're able to use that uranium waste that heretofore has been useless as the basic fuel for this reactor. And in fact, we spotted some fields of uranium in the United States that are this type that's thrown out. It's called depleted uranium. And there's enough of that to power the United States fleet for 750 years. If you're gonna grow a big fleet of the type of reactor that's in use today and deployed around the world, you're going to have to build a lot more enrichment plants. And those are the plants that make the fuel into the form that's useful for a power reactor. But if run a bit longer, then you've got a situation where you can be making bomb material. In the long run, this reactor we're developing is by comparison much more safe against that sort of problem because we don't need enrichment plants. Once we've got a fleet of reactors up and running, the world can eliminate the enrichment plants. That's a big step in the direction of avoiding nuclear weapons. Behind me is the digital control system for the traveling wave reactor. It has many automatic systems which make it an inherently safe reactor. You don't need on or off-site power to keep that plant nice and cool. It can sit there forever and take care of itself. If it starts to excurd, that is, go up in temperature, it will automatically and inherently shut itself down. Lo and behold, that makes things like Fukushima impossible. If you're going to raise people out of poverty, you have to provide energy. As Bill would say, if it isn't economic, it's just theory. We're at the point now where we can say, we know how to build the first plant. We know that there are some engineering, lots of intense engineering to do, but things have been confirmed well enough. It's time to proceed with the final design and construction. We're on track to build a traveling wave reactor. It's the usual things that would stop progress. Government's not getting along together. It's a matter of support of, and research for new energy systems, ours being one of them. The sooner we head off the emissions and the climate change problem, the less impact there'll be. And you can say, well, it's too late. Well, it's never too late, never too late, because bad can become really bad. Well, I'm a, an old fellow who's managed the, the biggest solar projects in the world and most of the geothermal projects and some wind projects and fusion energy research. So I'm an advocate of all, I've worked on all of them, but this is the one that could make, have the biggest impact on my grandchildren's lives. Present nuclear power has come a long way, but it's just we can do so much better and open up so much of the world 
to a, a very cost-efficient and safe kind of energy.